Many of us have learned in our lives that trusting people can be disastrous. More than that, we've learned that trusting not only people, but organizations or, or just trust in general can be a detriment to our life. It can even lead to disaster. Many of us have stories and experiences where trust has let us down. This would include parents, friends, and even brothers and sisters. And even worse, it could be people in the church too that are letting down our trust. Today I want to talk to you about trust, but before I do, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring the group of people called Life Align Church. Thank you so much for tuning in. Our mission here is to be a lifeline by leading people to becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. I believe no matter where you're watching from, that you're not watching by accident, but God has a message for you. He wants to bless you with. He wants to encourage you with and give you hope, encouragement, and love today. As always, if you would be so kind as to like, comment, and share, it goes a long way to get the message out and just let people know that that the church is here for them and that in this digital age and with all the different changes going on, um, just like we heard in the last few days, different things going on. Um, in fact, before we even continue, let me just encourage you. I'll tell you the same thing we told our volunteer staff this last week. You know, let's not be shaken by any changes, any different things that are getting moved around, shaken around. Don't, don't let that shake you. You know, we're rolling with the punches. Everybody is. Uh, everyone's on the same playing field. And you know what? This is going to pass. And so the last thing we need is to get up in our heads and to get swirling around. But what we really need to do is hang tough with the Lord and say, you know what? This too is going to pass. I'm going to stand firm in my faith and I'm not going to take it out on anybody else. And if we can do that, then dang it, I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> yes, we've all been burned many times before, but there's one who's always faithful. And that one is the Lord, of course. So that is my first point I want to make to you. And it's, it's really in the form of a question. Who do we trust? Who do we trust? And the Bible teaches us to trust in the Lord only. Because trust can be misguided at times. But when we trust in Jesus, that will never lead us astray. Watch this in, in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. It says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. The Word says also that we shouldn't lean in our own understanding. And our own understanding can, can really also look like trusting in ourselves, trusting in ourselves, trusting in our own logic. We can find ourselves asking things like, God, why is this happening? You know, how am I supposed to get through this? That's a question that we all ask lately, right? How am I supposed to get through this? These times, how am I supposed to trust in you? And this topic is so, so real to us now, so real to us today, is, is we need to lean into our trust in God. The fact is, listen to this, is we won't understand everything going on in our world, everything going on in our own lives. We, we are not going to understand everything that happens. And... If we had all the answers, would that really even be called trust at all? I don't think so. Um, many years ago, uh, when I was in my drug program at the Salvation Army, um, many years ago, everybody, okay, I'm a pastor now, but I went through a drug program at one point in my life. And I was six months into my program and I, I got caught goofing around and I got kicked out. Six months in, I got kicked out. I had to go back to jail, back to jail, and then had to start my program over again. Listen, at the time, I had no idea what the Lord, what the Lord was doing, you know, or if it was Him at all. Really, I was just really frustrated. And I was going, why, why God? Why is this happening to me? Why are you letting this happen, right? Because when things go wrong and when things are happening in our lives that we don't understand, often we, we blame God or we get caught in a circle of trusting in our own understanding to try and fix things. 
but sometimes, oftentimes, it's through hindsight that we learn that, man, oh, the Lord was really protecting me. The Lord was protecting me. In that situation for me, I was in the, the program for six months, got kicked out, and went back home and back to jail and back home for a few weeks where I went through a couple situations that caused me, thank God, caused me to want to stay in this region. That's why I'm even with you here in Stockton, Lodi, San Joaquin Valley, is because I lost my program and had to start it over again. At the time, I had no idea there would be any good reason for me to lose my program. But I, I'm hoping that some of you are glad that I did because that's the whole reason why I decided to stay in Lodi after the program was over. God is good. He is sovereign and we can trust in Him and lean not on our own understanding. In all of our ways, we can acknowledge Him and He'll direct our paths even if the path seems wonky. Can I say wonky in a Bible study? Maybe I can. I think it's cool. Um, the next question, the next point I want to make to you, um, and is also in the form of a question, is why? Why should we trust? And I touched on it a little bit, but um, we can go deeper into this. Why, why should we trust? We trust God because that's when He makes His home in our hearts. Now, how many of us know that true relationships begin and end with trust and that a true relationship with God depends on trust. The more I can trust someone and the more you can trust someone is the closer you become with them. Ephesians 3 verse 17 says this, Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Notice that that's actually grounded in trust. As you trust in him, Christ will make his home in your hearts. That's not all. Romans 15, 13. Testimony, two witnesses here for two scriptures. Romans 15, 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him because you trust in Him, then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, all that comes from trust. So relationships are based in trust. The more we trust in God, the closer we come to Him. So arguably, the less we need to trust in God, the, the weaker our relationship will be. But the more we need to trust in God, God, I need you. How many, time, how many of us can look back on our relationship with God and, and realize it was the times we needed to trust in Him the most and He came through and that's what developed our relationship with Him the most. It's because trust builds relationships. A relationship where we can trust in Him with anything and everything, man, that is, is, is crucial. Now, just try and picture it. Think of, think of just one of your closer friends. Um, think about the beginning of that relationship where you texted them and said, hey, meet me over at Starbucks at, at 5.30. And they showed up at 5.30. And then, you, you know, you guys are getting to know each other and you're hanging out. And then the next week, hey, meet me at Starbucks, 5.30. They show up at 5.30. This goes on and on and on. They always show up on time, your friend. Now, let's say a year goes by and for a year, They've been rock solid. They didn't write on time. And you text them, hey, let's meet at Starbucks, the usual 5.30. But then 5.30 rolls around, they're not there. 5.40, 5.50. Now, with the bank of trust that you have in that friend, what, what's the first thing you think? Oh, this, this person, I knew they were a flake. No, no, they've come through 52 times on time, the first thing that's going to roll through your mind if with someone who's dependable and trustworthy is, man, I hope everything's okay. Man, they must have had to take care of something serious. When we build a trust foundation in our relationships, we know that when things don't go as planned, there must be a good reason for that. And with God, it's the exact same way. Man, things aren't working out the way I think they are. 
But I have trust in my, in my God in heaven that if he's not showing up when I think he's supposed to show up, there must be a really good reason for that. And probably not because he got into a car accident. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think. It's, it's probably for my benefit, if anything. You following? Okay, I got one more thing for you. I got one more thing for you. And it's, it's the last point, And it comes in the form of a question again. And the question is this. How do we trust? How do we trust? I mean, this is where the rubber meets the road. Okay, Elliot, you talked me into it. How, how now do we trust in God? Trusting God, you need to know this, it takes practice. Practice, 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 practice. In order to trust God in your day-to-day life, it takes practice. You just have to practice over and over again, even starting with the small things. Just like relationships here on earth, trust is built over time. We start by trusting God with the little things like, God, I'm, I'm trusting you with, with my humility. Lord, I could really humble this person right now. Come on, right now, a lot of us out here on social media land, you know, we want to humble other people, but it's an act of trust for us to be humble and not to get the last word in and not to get, oh, I'm going to make my point. You know, that's an act of trust, and, but it's a smaller act of trust to say, okay, I'm going to be humble and I'm trusting that God is going to have my back if I'm humble. You following me? And with um, gratefulness, well, I'm going to be grateful even if I don't really feel grateful, I'm going to be grateful and I'm going to trust that God is faithful with my gratitude. Even if I don't feel grateful, I'm going to, I'm going to trust God and be grateful and count my blessings. And as we grow, so if we start with humility and start with gratefulness, gratitude, I'm telling you now how to do this, okay? Start with humility. Trust God with being humble. Trust God by being grateful. And as you're learning to trust in Him more, you learn to trust Him with everything. Things like finances. These things are harder to trust God with. Oh, God, I'm going to trust you to give. You know, I'm, I want to be generous like your word says, but oh, it takes a lot of trust. And you grow into that, but these are areas of our life that we, I think all of us want to trust God with our finances. And also, what about loss? Things like losing a loved one. Um, things like tragedy. Things like a global pandemic. Things like, you know, big things. If we learn to trust God with the small things on a regular basis, it's going to build our trust bank and we're going to learn to trust him with the big things. Isaiah 26, 8 says, Lord, we show our trust in you by obeying your laws. Isaiah 26, 8, Lord, we show our trust in you by obeying your laws. Our heart's desire is to glorify your name. Sometimes just obeying the word of the Lord with generosity with finances, with humility, with gratefulness, just obeying the word of the Lord, that is growing our trust. We trust in you by obeying your laws. Trust requires action. And the difference between faith and trust is action. I hear people a lot, preachers and pastors and and just everybody alike, talking about faith and trust like they're the same thing. But I would push back on that idea. Faith and trust aren't really the same thing, at least not in the, in, the, in the English language. Faith believes with all of our heart, and it's a good thing to have faith. You know, in the English word or the English translation of it, it's a good thing to have faith, to believe with all of my heart. But really, trust puts itself on the line for that belief. Let me, let me paint you a picture of the difference between faith and trust. And trust is, the, is really what the goal is. Faith should lead us to trust. Let me paint the picture. Faith says, I believe. And if you've heard me, maybe you've heard me tell this story before. Faith says, I believe that God can roll me across the Grand Canyon on a piece of dental floss with a wheelbarrow. Faith says, I believe he can do it. He created the universe. He created me. You know, he knit me together in my mother's womb and he, all the cattle is his and the hills are his and blah, blah, blah. You know, we got faith. I believe that God can do it. God can put me in that wheelbarrow on that dental floss across the Grand Canyon and he can wheel me across. I believe it. Trust 
comes along and says, get in. Trust says, get in the wheelbarrow. Man, that's a whole nother story. Isn't that right? It's a whole nother story. It's one thing to say and, and, and believe and feel like, I believe that God is faithful and just to forgive me of my sin. He's faithful and just to, when I trust Him with my finances, these bigger things, when I trust Him with my finances, He's going to come through. Faith believes it. Trust says, write the check. Send it out. Trust is action. Trust is an action word. Faith says, I believe it. Trust does it. And that's where we want to be. That's where we want to live. We want to do it. Trust requires action, and we want to put ourselves on the line for that belief. I want to congratulate you. I mean, even everybody tuning in to this, I want to encourage you. I want to just kind of leave you this. I've been feeling it for, for people these days with our volunteer staff and with the people of our church. And maybe you're not a part of our church, but you're just tuning in to get some encouragement today. Man, don't let this, don't let everything going on shake you right now. Man, just have trust. Trust and put yourself on the line. I am going to trust God in this season. I'm going to trust God that He's faithful, that He's going to come through for me, that He's going to come through for my family. And even if it doesn't look like He's going to come through, I'm going to trust anyways and let hindsight prove God faithful. I want to congratulate you for that and and really encourage you in that you are doing that. You can do that. That is who you are. That's how God made you, is to be faithful, is to be a trusting person, to trust in Him properly. I want to congratulate you for that. And please, use any links in the description of this video. If you want to get connected with us, man, we've got all the links for you. Just hit those links as someone's going to follow up with you, like just any of those links. Go through Growth Track, join the team. If you want to send in a connection card, we'll follow up with you on the phone. Um, if anything you want to follow up with a life group, we've got all the links for you right there to connect with us. And I want to pray with you before we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over each one of these individuals that are, that are watching right now. I pray that they're blessed by this content, that they're blessed by your word, and that they would take this word into the world and be the light that they were called to be. As always, Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and share if you were blessed by this content and and help us get it out to everybody who needs to hear it. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you again very soon.